Air Force personnel from the Republic of Singapore Air Force. How do you clean there? Uh? You need like perfect eyesight. The current silent bonus now is... I think my butt was a little too big. What? Is your butt too big for a pilot seat? This is your daily catch-up. With rising geopolitical tensions around the world, we're speaking to two Air Force personnel from the Republic of Singapore Air Force. So get ready to get high, because today we have Captain Fiona and Emmy for Amaran. Welcome hey. to the show! Welcome. So just for some background, Captain Fiona is a C-130 pilot with 122nd Squadron, and oh. ME-4 Amran is an Air Force engineer who specializes in the C-2 systems of the RSAF's ground-based air defense as Sets at the 809th squadron. Hey, do you understand what all that means? Uh? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> what is C130? Uh, we actually call it the C130. Oh, so C130. The other name for it is that it's a Hercules. Because wow. Like Dali Shu, because it is capable of carrying very heavy loads and it's a very versatile aircraft that can take off on like the strips. And that is why a lot of our taskings are to do with like humanitarian work. I actually texted my dad before this because I remember him telling me that he worked in the Air Force and it, he was actually a C 130 air, aircraft technician for seven uh, years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he called it the best cargo airplane in the world. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Why? Huh? No, he never say anything after that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> chat. For the C one thirty, right, Fiona? Is like, is there a uh, like use for it? In <laughs> of course, it. <laughs> right? <laughs> for the C one thirty, right? How does it operate during like say operations or like wartime? Okay, I think most of our work currently is peacetime, mm. but <laughs> a lot God. of our work is mission based. So, I mean, we partake in a lot of missions. Lah. Basically, we do things like airdrops and airlift missions to resupply troops and equipments, as well right. as search and locate missions. So Logistics win a war. It's <laughs> true, though, yeah. So, how, how, did you, how did you become a female pilot? I understand that there's very few of you in Singapore. I think there's a growing number of female pilots, but as for myself, um, I always had an passion for aviation since I was young and I think what made me really get interested in flying was when I joined the Singapore Youth Flying Club. Ooh. Yeah, so that was quite a pivotal moment for me. I need to pay, no? No, it's actually huh? pretty much free. Yeah, so huh? really, anyone can join. I really the, wanted, the the youth I wanted to be a pilot, you know. Then I, after I that, the youth flying car, I remember I saw the cost fees, then I like, whoop, can't afford that. <laughs> no, maybe the one that you saw is like another flying club, but for the youth flying club, right, there's a specific age range that you can join, probably I think 16 to 18 years old. I remember the only fees I paid for were like the t shirt and some of the cost <gasps> materials. Right. Yeah, so I shall give that free, like, you fly plane already, then t shirt want to charge you. Uh. Do you need like perfect eyesight that kind? Oh, actually, no. I think that's a very big myth that I will hope to debunk. Oh. Yeah, so now, right, our eyesight requirements are actually less than 800 degrees for myopia and oh. less than 300 degrees for astigmatism. So it's actually very, very tolerant. Oh. Yeah, if you think about the 800 and 300. Right. For people who are on the borderline of these requirements, right, the RSA actually sponsors corrective surgery for the pilot trainees. Wait. Wow. Yeah, so, LASIK, uh? um, we call it PRK. It's not LASIK. Yeah, so right. the important thing to note about that is, right, candidates should not undergo any corrective surgery prior to joining because we want oh. to maintain our medical standards. So, so they only can do first, our then LASIK. Yes, they only can do our <laughs> PRK procedure. Oh. Oh, what is a brilliant <laughs> sign on bonus? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> Some of those with like 200 degrees one day they don't get. Yeah! <laughs> 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 you know, you know, there's only this bonus I'm better than mine. <laughs> is it like mandatory for pilot for like pilots to go through that youth flying club thing? No, actually it's not. So oh. it's really on a personal basis that I sign up for the youth flying club. Right. In fact, um, there are many pilots out there whom are, whom weren't from the youth flying club. Okay, then can I apply now to be a RSAF <laughs> pilot? Or cannot? No, yes, you can apply. You, you they can, just you can. won't take you any. Oh. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not. I'm going to get flying experience then. Yeah, actually can or not? Uh? Can, can. Oh, yeah, as in, I was also a no. mid careerist So like, I didn't oh. join in like after A-levels. I joined in after I was working in an investment bank for a period of time. Oh. And I made the switch over. So yes, definitely you can. From an investment bank. Oh. Uh, what, yeah. what, was the, what was the trigger? Your boss really... <laughs> 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 I want to be in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> no lah. Look out the window. Look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually completely my fault that it took one year. <laughs> huh? Yeah, huh? because one part of the process is that there will be aeromedicals and for that portion, they 
take down measurements of like our arm length, our <laughs> torso length, as well as our hip size, like our butt size. Yeah, uh-huh. for myself, what happened was that I think my butt was a little too big uh-huh. for <laughs> the requirements. Why cannot butt big? So in the fighter cockpit, it's not <laughs> very spacious, right? Uh-huh. So it's already tailored to for the right. butt size. Oh, to so it can't be like too tall. So it's yeah, it's going to be too tall. Oh. So there's also a height limit. So you spent oh. a year cutting Actually about three to six months. So they gave me a review in I think about four to five months. So they told me to go and like shed some weight <laughs> in oh. the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. But like down there only? Uh, okay, I think it'll be hard to spot yeah. loose weight. So oh. just, just yeah. work out more, the, eat a little oh. less. Yeah. <laughs> How do you have to keep measuring whether you hit the mark or not? Can you imagine you, you what? You eight pack and you're like, I still did it, I'm like, All your glutes are in. You're just always caught. No. Yeah, oh. so that, that was a reason why it was it took a little longer and I was in banking for a little longer before I joined. Oh my god. Right. Yeah. But, but the average, like, time for the application process is this is not typical it's not typical it shouldn't take so long so yeah. it will be if I remember correctly it will be compass tests and interviews and aeromedicals yeah if everything is smooth it shouldn't take more than like three to four months what's compass test? Uh, it's basically a test to assess your aptitude for the various vocations not just pilots I think for air traffic controllers for weapons systems right. officers as well so there are multiple tasks in that test that we have to do it's Pass- a written test lah no, not really. It's actually a computer. <laughs> huh? yeah, yeah. It's, a it's words, yeah. la, right? No, it's not physical. It's it's physical. So we actually oh. have a, it's a joystick that oh. we can we are supposed to use for the test. Then oh. they are like it's a very specialized equipment. Basically, I think there are a few buttons around. I remember okay. pressing. Yeah. Then within that test, there's different tasks. So like they will try to see whether you can multitask well. So they will make you like fly a plane while at the same time doing some like mental calculations how is she supposed to do that if she applied today she don't know how to fly anything I mean right no but it's the fake plane like you just like like it's it's just a simulated (laughs) thing or is it like arcade arcade yeah I guess you can say it's similar yeah so there are like uh, boxes that you have to fly through so they try to see how ah, like flappy bird, oh. <laughs> right. which without you flying club also got chance to pass one lah. Yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Okay, and okay. do you actually need to do these mental calculations now that you're on the job? From time to time, yes, especially when we are more junior and we have to like calculate our fuel requirements. Isn't it a as- fuel bar? <laughs> <laughs> no, so we need to know like how much excess fuel we have, how much overheads we have. Right then, C one thirty got. Okay, it's a dumb question. Uh. Huh? Got autopilot or not? Because I mean, I imagine presumably five or six hours, why not, right? The technology is already available. Yes, yes. So once we are at cruise, we are on autopilot. Oh, have yeah, but because what, what is autopilot? Like you just press, then you just... Yeah, I'm imagining it's one button and then poof. Like you can just leave the seat, then go back, eat something, that kind. Technically, we don't leave the seat. So we have two oh. pilots. At any one point in time, there has to be a pilot whom is... On oh. controls. Yeah, so that's only on cruise phase. So during critical phases, like we, we all have to be. But around. what if both pilots need to go toilet? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> dire, dire toilet situation. Usually that should not happen. Oh. Yeah. How do you pee in there? Quite cool. Is that uh, a, it's like a romper, law, I guess. You gotta take it out. I don't <laughs> know, I'm speaking from my ass <laughs> right now. Is there, is there a zipper at the back? I, I think oh, for the- guys it's easier because like you can just like open that yeah, yeah. small zip the fly to, uh, yeah, yeah. to pee. But for females, right, uh, we actually have to take out the entire... Yeah, it's like, like a romper. Oh. Like, yeah, like yeah, it is, yeah, it is. But, but there are pee pads around that. I huh? think it's huh? in circulation mass market. So we currently still do not have it, but we heard that there are some air forces that actually use pee pads for females. Oh, so, so you can just pee. Right. Yeah, it's linked to like, like a pee bag. So for example, I think the fighter pilots, they were required that more because they oh. don't have a toilet. Whereas so you have to a toilet on board. There, there is a toilet just that wow. it's a little medieval. Yeah, we call it the honey pot. La, so it's like basically Sick. a potty then. It's also cute. <laughs> then oh. you shit and then like the f- shit's just gonna fly in the sky. Oh, we will, no, so for for big business, there's like a plastic bag we will use to contain oh. it. But for <laughs> like, <laughs> but for females, because we were both pH in the same place so we will just use the bag but for guys right because you are using a urinal it's also a urinal <laughs> 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 wow I mean, you see this thing male female yeah. side yeah. it's like on the right on the left <laughs> yeah but the urine will be dispersed out 
into the air with SUP into it. No. Huh? There's a hole like... <laughs> it doesn't there. seem safe, huh? Like, it's a commercial plane flying up. Yeah, or like when you press the button, then the... Psh, then it will let it... No, it just goes straight up. It huh? It's yeah. a hole. Oh, it's just a hole. It's a... Uh, you know that's linked to a hole that's outside of the aircraft. Like a outlet. Did you, did it's a small tube. Oh. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> now you fly above your office every single day, how do you feel? You feel a drop in the room. Before they learn, they have to dump fuel. Literally, just dumping in the air anyway. I mean, like both pee and fuel should evaporate before the before it reaches the ground yeah. or yeah. you for that matter. But, but, yeah, but, but I'm sure they, they don't do it like over like. Definitely, we are very anything. careful. As in, yeah. I mean, if you got to go, you got to oh. go. <laughs> so for, for yourself though, yeah. did you did you have aspirations like when you talk about joining the air force? Right, at first it was you want to be a pilot first, then after mm. that. Yeah, um, I mean, more. Um, I think since when I was young, uh, my, my dad um, um, shared a lot of stories uh, when he was in the SCF. Um, mm. very inspiring. Oh, okay. But as I grew, grew older, um, um, engineering was something that I also wanted to do. And then if you weigh everything in, uh, military career, um, able to work with um, aircrafts, able to work with um, sophisticated um, state-of-the-art technology, mm. and also to pursue an uh, engineering career, right? Uh, RSF is right. the platform. Yeah. Mm. What What about your job? You think is is the part that interests you the most? I guess um, when you deal with uh, state of the art technology, uh, um, all these uh, GBAT systems, uh, in short, ground based air defense systems, mm. uh, it's not that something that uh, people get to deal with uh, day yeah. to day. Um, these systems are complex in nature, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a person who likes to solve. Um, 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 issues la. right and uh, you know when when something happens to the system mm. um, you, you, you've got to uh, get your your, your hands on uh, mm. uh, and really to understand uh, what might be the problem um, mm. and you know give that engineering assessment uh, right. that is needed oh we just upgraded right we just upgraded our <laughs> ground defense thingy ground right air defense to systems? Esther or something like that yeah so uh, yeah, Esther um, achieved his uh, FOC uh, in yeah. November yeah. <laughs> no, idea no idea free of charge oh, I guess yeah. I don't know <laughs> no no it's oh, not it's not free yeah, so FOC is our full operational capability. I see. Uh, yeah, yeah, What's great. Esther? Esther 30 mm -hmm. uh, so is our system. Uh. So like Singapore is, I mean, I, I read somewhere online, uh, is the most militarized state in the world. But yet when you walk around Singapore, or personally I've had the privilege to go to many military bases, right? Yeah. You don't see missiles pointing everywhere though. So in, in a matter of like aircraft, <laughs> enemy aircraft, like if you want to attack Singapore, right? Yeah. It's not like we got 24 hours, you know? Uh, okay, so... So, well, how, how did... Yeah, how, how did <laughs> it work? on the spot? Oh, cannot say. Is yeah. it like you press the button there, all the flowers suddenly like... Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, like this time. The pointy ones yeah, only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, mean, uh, I, I mean, we will not see uh, missiles coming up from buildings or anything, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, where I mean, they come out from is the question, I guess. Uh, that's something confidential. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't reveal okay, okay. missile locations. Oh. Um, but um, rest assured, um, the RSF, you know. Um, no, wait, wait, wait. You're not asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure, bro. I, I really do die one. No, but where, the, where, where, I mean, not exactly the location, but how yeah. does all these things come out? Like all from your base? Uh? Yeah, because in my head, it was always like, it's a station turret, you know, and then like from yeah. there. Like yeah. ground defense, is is it that? Like those kind of like missiles and yeah, stuff? Yeah, so, so uh, for ground um, um, defense, basically, uh, what we, we term it, uh, we call it the island air defense. Uh, okay, wow, sounds like. good. So uh, basically these assets are deployed uh, across the country. Also, you're driving up of sorts. Uh, mm. They are deployable, they are mobile. Okay. I'll take that oh, as a yes. I'll take that as a yes. Okay. <laughs> they operate 24-7. Mm. Uh, and yeah, they are they help us uh, to you know, quickly respond uh, to mm. threats. So do you guys get deployed for overseas deployment since you are island defense? Doesn't make sense, you go and defend another yeah. island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do go overseas uh, for various exercises wow. uh, across uh, the globe. La. Go where? Uh, where do you want to go? <laughs> you can choose. Far. <laughs> 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 no, so, so, I mean, we got uh, long-term detachments, uh, short-term detachments, um, um, exercises. So, we get to go like Australia, right. um, okay, okay. Thailand, a lot of land. Wow. US. Yeah. Ooh, okay, they've also been to causes like uh, in France, uh, wow. Italy. <laughs> yeah. right. As in France, Paris. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's Paris. Somewhere near Paris. Yeah. Paris. Ah. You land in Paris, they give you one day, then after you go to somewhere else. <laughs> you see the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Did you, like, because in, in a foreign airspace, have you all simulated literally a, a giant ass flying projectile and then you shoot an actual missile? Of course, right. uh, yeah. we do have live firing. Yeah. Uh, and um, this 
projectile or, or it's told by a plane or something like that, right? Yeah, it's usually told and then yeah, you just take down that dummy. Oh, yeah. Fun eh? <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, something yeah. that uh, I guess you don't see uh, in Singapore. La. Yeah, and no uh, land, of course yeah. it's not shooting anybody. Yeah, but when you no, go but the pilot house scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you couldn't have one of training in Norway. So you only just recall Ong's first time shooting. <laughs> 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 oh, what? what? <laughs> they're, they're professionals, la, so they, yeah. they do this uh, day in day out. La. Yeah. Um, so so that uh, it's okay. I, I I don't think they're they're so worried. La. Having gone a lot of exercises around the world, do we match up? If the answer is no, I have to change question. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we definitely match up because there has been a lot of examples whereby uh, I mean not just like for wartime but for peacetime rules as I mentioned like HADR humanitarian assistance yeah. and disaster relief efforts where we are typically the first on the scene yeah oh. to yeah to arrive there and be able to render our help to the countries that are in need so. I think that in itself is testament to how we are capable and operationally ready. Uh, right. Not just yes. the destructive power, but the power yeah. to help. Call signs. How do like pilots even like come out of that? Because it, all the names I see, right, all like very random one. Eh? Um okay, I think call signs are generally one or two syllable. Oh. There will be one or two call signs that they desire and uh typically you probably wouldn't get the one that you want unless you really invest a lot into obtaining that. Wait, you don't <laughs> pick so your own call like sign? You then? cannot write yourself. So you can propose a couple of call signs, but eventually it will be up to your unit's management to give you the call oh. sign. Yeah. That's so strange. So they have a, like a meeting <laughs> where yeah, they're like, okay, like, we'll just call yeah, yeah, call sign <laughs> naming events that, that multiple people will get their call signs. Um, yes. Must it match like your personality, that kind of thing? Sometimes it does, but it's, it's really pretty random like how people want their call signs. What's yours, sir? Uh? Oh, so I, I don't have one yet because I'm still not technical qualifi- qualified. So for my soldier, we have to be tech qualified in order to get call signs. I see. So yeah. if you had a choice, then yeah. do what you want to be. Uh, must I really say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it, is it, is it yeah, cannot say? Yeah, you probably shouldn't go over there. No lah. Okay, so I, I would choose a call sign jukebox. Yes. Love it. Oh. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, very retro, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's like quite cool. Eh? Oh, yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a name that actually dates back to very fond memories I had during the start of my career at basic military training. What happened was that a few platoon mates and I decided to lead the platoon into singing songs in order to keep our spirits high during the 24 mm. click route mm. march. Mm. Yeah, so we sang many songs that night. We sang like contemporary hits all the way to <laughs> National Day <laughs> songs. Yeah, yeah so... Contemporary? <laughs> <laughs> like what? <laughs> John Legend, all of me. Yeah, it's really like every other song you can think of like that's not like military or national day related, we just like sang all we could. Right. Like, oh. Oh. So you were the leader. A few of my yeah. platoon and myself, like, so we took the lead and we just like sang along. So yeah, it was quite remarkable because I think we managed to sing throughout the whole 24 kilometers and that was about six hours in total. Huh? Right. Yeah. So because you have flying qualifications from the Youth Flying Club, right? You could have gone commercial and you could have gone military. Do you think the monetary trade-off for you going military was, is really big? Actually, I don't think so because our remuneration is pretty much strategically positioned to really be a premium to enhance our appeal as well as to attract more individuals to join. And I think it's very important to have a competitive total comms package, right, which the military also sees that and recognizes that. So we really peg it competitively to really attract people to join our ranks. Yeah, and I think beyond monetary considerations, right, there are also a wide range of benefits that we offer. They like what, like what? Yeah, there's like very comprehensive medical insurance coverage. Oh, we have right. like good annual leave entitlements as well as a very diverse range of corporate welfare perks. So that aligns with the advantages of being part of the civil service. Oh, cool. Yeah, but I think for the benefits of the various schemes can actually refer to our website at RSAF Careers. So it lists down quite comprehensively oh. all the benefits for the schemes like EOS, EWOS. Right. Yes. I have no idea what's all that. You are what? If? I'm MDES. Oh, <laughs> 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 got it. Really, uh. I created a new one. For myself, I also got a sign-on bonus of ten thousand dollars because no. I'm a graduate holder. I'm a degree holder, but mm. I do. Slay. Yeah, know that during that time for A level or poly graduates, right? They will get twenty thousand huh? dollars. Huh? You got less? Huh? Yes, I got less. <laughs> but the basic, but, wait, why? but the basic higher like. Yeah, the basic will be higher. Oh, it's a bit so, like so it's the same amount, la, probably. probably yeah. They just give you first oh. or give you. Yeah. Well, but if I'm a poly graduate, <laughs> and I get 20,000 dollars, I just get that. Like, the degree, man. Like, I just. 
So is that what happened to you, sir? Uh, so so I, I, I don't have a sign-on bonus. Uh, huh? How but, come? Huh? But uh, I was offered a scholarship. So that's more than that sign-on bonus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything. yeah, but for our Air Force engineers uh, that deal with the maintenance of the house, mm. uh, the current sign-on bonus now is uh, 36,000. Oh, what? Oh, what the arbitrary? Yeah. What, what, what a weird number. Why 36? Actually, nothing arbitrary yeah. on yeah, and really why, like, why, really why, really uh, why we never round yeah. up to yeah. five? So, so, so I mean, we, we want more people to join us. Mm. Uh, and uh, like what Fiona mentioned, uh, we, we see how to um, you know cater to uh, the commercial market as well as to, know, to give a better premium uh, mm. yeah, as compared to certain sectors. Yeah. And you think you do this for life? Uh, definitely. Uh, mm. Like I said, I think a military career is uh, something that is uh, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and in Singapore, um, not many organizations deal with um, 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 military assets. Like. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you fall in love with your job, right? And, <laughs> and I think it's it's a great job. And thank you for your service, right? But I think for many young people that want to join, like especially for myself, also, yeah. so I was at a point where I almost signed on, and I remember thinking my fear, right, yeah. was that if I do five years later, six years later, I serve my bond, then if I realize that this is not for me then I feel like I have a 10-year um, experience gap yeah. in my career. W- was that a fear for you? Because uh, like, well, you, you do with missiles all day, right? Then yeah. it's very hard <laughs> to like, you know, you go and join another industry. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, because it's engineering, right? Mm. Uh, okay, fair. Um, you, you still have like your engineering Oh yeah, that's true. Skills, yeah, yeah, knowledge. Yeah, that's unfair advantage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, so Why stop you? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. right. Uh, 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 and, and, and it's not just because of engineering, you, you still learn like um, certain soft skills. I mean, uh, we, we also develop our leadership um, um, skills uh, and it's true. Uh, we have experience uh, managing people on the ground. Mm. Um, and these skills are actually very transferable, you know, when you, when you mm. if you decide to, to uh, venture uh, in any other industry. Right. Yeah. For pilots, can you really actually just like from the Air Force shift over to become- Not saying you want to. To become a commercial pilot? I think with a 10-year bond. Okay. But <laughs> with regards to that, uh, I don't think many people are shifting because like what Amaran said, it's a meaningful career to be in the military. Mm. And in fact, the SAF and the Air Force has like um, schemes in place such as we have this savers plan, so savings and employee retirement plan that actually encourages officers mm. to serve out a full career with the SAF. Pension. Right. Yeah, it's something like wow. a pension. So yeah. it actually kind of replaced the old pension system. We had an old pension system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what happens is that the SAF will deposit a percentage of the officer's salary every month to this savers account and that is being like invested with returns generated yearly and right. at certain wow. milestones of like our career, right, we are able to withdraw vested amounts out of these accounts and the largest amounts that can be vested is like at the end of the career right. yeah, to really encourage us to stay out the way. I think it's a good way of retaining the officers. All right, and that's it for today. This episode was brought to you by RSAF. So a big thank you to them. And of course, Captain Fiona and Emmy for Amaran. Hey. Woo! Hey, we you. hope that today's episode has given you a better idea of what a career in the Air Force looks like. And for more information, you can head down over to the links below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. 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 Is it like pilots must wear like aviators that kind? That's <laughs> right. Every time I see a pilot, right, then the only sunglasses they have, right, is the aviators. Then I don't know whether it's like a thing like it's all it's pilots must bread, have. Uh. Actually, those glasses are prescribed by our aeromedical center. Oh, but why? Like, why must this one only? Why cannot like that? Like, oh, actually, the specifics, I, I, I honestly do not know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Huh, you know, it, they were, it was just the brand they contracted to <laughs> by the US Air Force to design one for the Air Force, and then it became like that, and so it became traditional. Oh, the no, the yeah. teardrop shape and the rectangle shape feature larger lenses that provide full coverage for the eye sockets of pilots. That means the design of that one brand, and then it oh. just stuck. Oh. Yeah. I thought it's just they want to look cool. I mean, it is now. Secondary, oh. yeah. Oh. Right now, it's just to look cool. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.